Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a new best of three series here between in the bottom right spawning is the blue Protoss player Dragon Phoenix Gaming Zest and in the top left spawning as the red Protoss player I also believe he's in Dragon Phoenix Gaming even though he doesn't have it as their clan tag It is going to be parting of course Parting with a cheeky little wall here first pylon at the wall Lovely to see lovely to see uh, PvP of course a very tricky matchup um, lo lo lots of things that can happen. There's been a lot of meta changes over the past three, four months. I feel like every single month, if you would go one month into the future and then tell me what the meta is going to be the month after, I tell you you're a madman. But uh, it just keeps changing, it keeps changing. We went from Charged Archon Immortal to Disruptors to a more Zealot focus style. Now we play some Zealot focus stuff into Archons, sometimes with Immortals and then into Disruptors. There's still people just playing Mass Blink Stalkers. Um, the opening stage is absolutely bonkers as well with so many different build orders, with so many different openers. It, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely in love with the matchup and uh, yeah, I just love, love seeing uh, high level guys go at it. It's just so much fun to see the differences in play style, the differences in, in how they perceive that the matchup should be played. There's people that play extremely passive, there's people that believe that aggression is the way DTs have their place, oracles have their place, and almost any structure is a viable opener now the most common thing that we do see however is we do see a trend that that kind of leans towards blink stalker openers and that's just because blink stalkers give you so much utility in that mid game whether that's against prisms against oracles or just for a little bit of harass or safety um they just seem to have it all. Now, both players are opening up here with a two-gate expand, which is already interesting to see. Sometimes you see people, even on maps without a ramp, leading down from their natural. So from their natural ramp, uh, you, you'll see them one-gate expand, but not going to be the case here as we see Zest opening up with Stalker Stalker and Parting on the other end is opening up with Adept Adept. Now, Adept Adept has the potential to go into something uh, a little more scary uh, and that is the the eight adept opener this is one of the most scared most feared openers in this matchup currently parting pokes back in with the probe there's many uh, philosophies on what is best to do with those workers uh, there's people that like to sacrifice it to check the tech there's people that like to build a pylon to see if unit three and four will start like there's yeah there's just infinite variations uh, instead of seeing the standard eight adept or standard the the, the figured eight adept we're going to be seeing a uh, a four adept with probably double oracle it's possible that he goes into six adept for this albeit a little bit unlikely and i'm kind of liking this opener here for parting um he's going to be able to to do some damage with this he will be able to do damage with this the question is not if he will be able to do damage with this the question is how much damage will he be able to do with this and that's a very good question and also the reason why i ask it of course uh, only good questions here at the hearthstone cast channel uh, <laughs> so we see twilight council coming down for zest starts a battery in the main base and i think he can kind of smell what's coming uh, over here i mean i'm impressed by that he hasn't scouted anything yet. His hallucinations, if anything, are a bit late. See, the energy is still at 12 after using it. Very uncharacteristic mistake there. We see a pylon being used here for the wall rather than the battery. Reason for that is, is that the pylon uh, gains HP a lot quicker. Now, battery is semi in the mineral line. Will be able to help out against the Oracle. We see Zest really struggling with, uh, with, with getting his probes transferred down. To the natural as uh, these adepts keep shading the oracle now takes a it's an interesting route into the the main base so oh, these adepts are going to finish up we'll get two three workers there the the, the oracle in the main base is going to be going for a stasis ward pull away with the probes five workers going down one adept down so far misfire twice there by parting it's going to end up costing him uh well Actually, all of his adepts here, which is painful. Second Oracle joins the fight as well. There's a single stasis worker. Overall, I think... I think this is okay for Zest. And the reason why I say that is because I see a proxy Dark Shrine on the map. Oh my god, what is this? Beautiful. The... The, that zapping micro, like ev every professional is capable of, of microing their oracles, but the way that parting controls them is really something else. Just so fluid, beautiful movement. It's absolutely fantastic to see. I love it. 
I absolutely do love it. Now, we're gonna be uh, seeing DTs here, and the only detection that Parting has are these two oracles. If there is no recall available, which currently there is, there is 50 energy, but if this 50 energy gets used, these DTs will be able to do a crap ton of damage. There's a single, single revelation available currently. Second one almost there as well. Oh, still not being used, still not being used. We see DTs, we see, he sees them, he sees them, he sees them. Instant recall. Force field on the ramp? No, no force field on the ramp. Instead, what? Oh my god, this is beautiful. How many workers have gone down so far? He killed two workers. That's it. Two workers for... Oh my... What? He missed the DT. Oh, what a mistake. Okay, here we have a push coming out of Zess. No blink for either player yet. Parting is a lot closer with his blink, though. Zess needs to be careful here. There's a battery. Uh, what's the stalker count here? Six against seven. Super battery cannot be activated. There's no energy available. Oh, wait, this is so risky by Zest. This blink finishes up in three seconds here out of parting. Parting already has a, a third base as well. And this was a crazy good defense here coming out of parting. Crazy, crazy good. Sure, he's down three workers, but right now he has blink. He has uh, equal stalker count. Actually, it's one more stalker than his opponent. And he has two oracles on the map that potentially can pull stalkers into the main base as well. It is very, very tempting right now for parting to move across the map. And try and do some damage while he has blink. The reason why he isn't doing that is because he is afraid of counterattacks with a DT. He needs to keep his oracles at home at least until this observer is out. And at that point he's afraid that most likely blink is going to be out. So these oracles are going to serve more of a defensive purpose. Yeah, there we go. Parting realizing, hey, these oracles, I probably can't safely send them across the map anymore. But guess what? I'm going to be able to use them for continuous revelation during fighting times or when we're maneuvering our army. Stasis wars for keeping ramps and keeping general areas um, more safe. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking this, honestly, here coming, coming out of Parting, who is uh, up 14, 15 supply. He's looking at... A stalker lead as well. Does he need to attack here? He does have a lot of gateways. Six gateways. No forge yet. Worker production is not stalling yet. Double battery on the way here for Zest. But uh, if plus one ends up finishing up here for Zest. I don't even mind his position that much. Sure, he's down in gateways. He only has three against six. But the double battery with a super battery can really put in some work. Five stalkers ahead right now, though, is parting. Snipes out one sentry to start with. Decent force fields. Uh, loses one stalker kind of for free there. Uh, 13 stalkers again. 17 plus one getting closer and closer to finishing up. There's no robo yet, so no immortal here to help out. We see three more stalkers on the way as well. 20 stalkers against 13 currently. Don't forget, batteries are about to run out as well. No extra batteries are being built here, even though Zest has started floating a fair amount of money. Forgets the micro two of the stalkers on the left side as well. I think Parting might just be picking up a big fat W over here. No, does get temporarily pushed back. Plus one. Oh my god, it's getting so close, so close. Immortal not starting yet. Zest, what are you doing? What are you paying attention to? He lost a lot of workers during this as well. So even if he's going to end up surviving... Oh my god, it's the oracles. I didn't even realize. I was like, ah, I bet these oracles uh, would be real nice as well. 13 workers going down here. Two zealots for extra tanking damage. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, this might just be a plus one. Ends up finishing up, but not in time. GG gets called and Parting wins game number one here on Romanticide. Game number two here between Zest and Parting. And it's going to be played on Oxide as Zest decides to open up with a pylon scout, which is extremely uncommon currently in this matchup as um, Gateway Scout is the, 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 the most common thing. Pylon Scout can only block one thing more or, or has one advantage over a Gateway Scout and that is indeed that you can block a Nexus first. Now this is probably just Zest projecting on his opponent what he's actually doing himself because we actually see Zest open up with a Nexus first on 18. Oh wow, I didn't know this was the, the timing people believed was the best. In my mind, whenever people play Nexus first, I always thought 17 Nexus, 
uh, 17 gate was the best way to do it because then you don't need to use your first chrono boost and you're not oversaturating oversaturating your main base so much but apparently zest believes it is 18 18 now parting scouts this and what, what is his response going to be here is my is going to be my main question okay he throws down a pylon and says i'm gonna proxy you he throws down a cyber core as well i don't actually know a hundred percent what the correct what the correct play is though against this uh this nexus first i believe proxy stargate is a very solid opener but i'm not sure if that's what we're going to be seeing here coming out of parting who's mining three in one gas and one in the other which is uh, slightly inefficient because uh, the, the third worker contributes a little less in the overall mining percentage than the first two workers do if we for example have, have three workers and together they have a hundred percent of mining right uh, whatever that amount is the first two workers together contribute about 70 percent and the third worker only adds another 30 percent so whenever you have two gases you want to be splitting your workers to 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 have a slight boost in in gas income basically now we see zest opening up with two gate he did he just scout the two gate is okay he scouts the fact that it is going to be four gate um, he saw two gates at home. He sees two gates being proxied. I have no clue why the second gate is here as well. I feel like he's revealing more information than he actually should have. I think, yeah, I was going to say Zest can just throw down a robotics facility in this case. Um, Parting is just completely showing his hand, I guess. Uh, not... not, not not showing the pylon so that that might be a bit of a surprise but in general i feel like this is just a uh, such an obvious play here coming out of parting yeah and parting also he'll get his pylon spot it's gonna cost him 100 minerals which might not look like a big deal but it's actually pretty pretty big that's another stalker right now that can't be built on parting side we see another stalker being chrono boosted this battery is being assaulted by uh, two stalkers on the low ground, good cancel there, last second coming out of Zest. The single stalker is, 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 is trying to hold the fort, but it's not quite working out. We have an immortal, probably should be getting chrono boosted out. We still have a single battery over. Oh my god, the stalker pops out on the wrong side, but actually seems to be the correct side. As there's not that many stalkers here for parting, there's four stalkers out already for Zest. And to me, honestly, this just looks like the moment uh, the immortal finishes that this game kind of ends what a terrible build order here coming out of parting desperately trying to break his opponent but still has has two batteries uh, is zest immortal pops out next immortal starts immediately the only way he can now perhaps break him is by warping in a couple of adepts and then going in with adepts trying to snipe like eight nine workers and then magically yeah okay well th this is kind of what i was thinking is probably the only play but yeah this is just not going to work this is Holy crap, this was awful. This is just a just a terrible response in my opinion to Nexus first. Is the proxy gateways this close? That it's so obvious what's happening here. Um, good little wall here coming out of Zest because it wasn't completely over. There still was some potential that this could work. But I mean at this point we're playing two base against one, 25 workers against 21, and the army composition the production everything is just looking so freaking good for zest I, I i don't actually know what in the world parting can do here i mean supplies are equal but there's two immortals for one guy zest is so confident he wants to move out like that's really not normal that's just not normal uh two sentries go down this is a good move out here coming out of parting actually does get a little bit of damage on that one immortal but with the super battery activated uh, will not be able to get it down parting ggs out as zest ties up the series one to one and in a very short amount of time we're already here at match point in this uh in this exciting pvp all right here we are final game of this best of three map is going to be light shade i'm still here to guide you through it all and we have ooh, parting parting what are we doing over here my friend zoom in on this probe this looks a lot like a uh, standard one gate experiment i kind of i kind of spoke about this in the first game is that a lot of people even on maps that aren't oxide and pillars we see this one gate expand attempts or these one gate expand plays 
gonna go back. He doesn't believe that Zest is going to one get expand himself. We see. What do we see here? We see a scout coming out of Zest. We see a Chrono Boost. No gas. What is this parting? Is this a an 18 Nexus after 16 Gateway? Uh, he'll need to cancel the probe or he won't be able to get this down. Yeah, dude. So the only reason why 17 Nexus is better than a standard one gate expand is because you can't get blocked by your opponent's probe. Now he's gonna go into double gate. I mean, he still needs to build a cyber. No, he's not sending down a probe. Yeah, he realizes now. He's like, oh crap. Where's my cyber core? Semi semi wall here on the low ground. Two gate versus two gate. I mean, the situation doesn't look awful. It's just I feel like he, he should have been able to get this down if he <laughs> if he builds a 17 nexus. This is really silly because if Zest has a brain and uh, I know that he does, he will know that with the amount of gas that's going to be mined, there's no way in hell that Parting will be able to afford Stalker, Stalker, Warp Gate, and a tech building. It's just simply not possible. And uh, uh, unless Parting is going to delay his Stalkers for a very long time, that's not going to be the case. So Zest is just going to scout this. He sees, okay, sell it. Well, the, he sees only a single gate working. He now knows there is 100% a real proxy on the map somewhere. And, and Parting kind of wants to, and Zest wants to figure out, hey, what, what what's happening there, you know? What is going on there? Opens up with a Stargate himself, as a, we can we can see on the production tab. This probe is moving around like his life depends on it. I'm not sure what he's going for, but quite frankly, I kind of like it. What is this probe doing? He's going through the middle. Okay, just looking for our proxy gates. Uh, these are good locations for proxy gates or potential, maybe potentially even a proxy robo, but I'd probably be scouting over here going up towards this side in case of a proxy stargate. It's going to be Dark Templar actually. Uh, we see the first oracle, where are you rallied? Straight into the main base. If it makes it exit through the bottom, there's a decent chance that that stargate will be able to, or that oracle will be able to spot this. Now, this pylon, funnily enough, might be able to actually kind of give away what is going on here or might actually give away what's going on here we see a change in movement out of this oracle is not going to be spotting the pylon oi 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 he's just straight up gonna find his oracle unless he changes direction right oh my god oh, that's so close that is so insanely close First, the Lu's not gonna go for this probe. He wants more, he wants more. Zest is greedy, he could have picked up a free worker there and instead wants to go into the main base. He's gonna still get one worker, but takes a lot of damage in return as well. Second Oracle is going to be able to finally spot this pylon. Probe moves into the main base, sees a Twilight Council. We see a depth starting to move forward. Might be able to get that shade down as well. I mean, he definitely should be able to get that shade. And now, this might look bad, um, but actually, this is going to force Zest to activate his oracle. And if he activates his oracles, he activates both of them. It means he'll have less energy for once those DTs are out. Two workers end up going down as well. One worker on the side of parting. We immediately see Zest just starting to move around with these oracles. Now, there's still two revelations available. I think Zest spotted it. I think Zest spotted it. He's seen it. He knows. It's going to be hidden behind the natural mineral line, isn't it? Oh, he sees, he sees, he sees. Zest is just a little bit too good for these tricks parting. Let's be real here. This is not some random European to toss you're playing against. This is freaking Zest, man. Um, I kind of like the position for Zest currently. We have three workers killed for parting, two workers killed for Zest. But Zest still has the assets that killed earlier. Now, with these two oracles, later on in the game, he will be able to either throw on stasis wards, maybe do another flyby. It forces parting to keep units in all of his bases. We see the forge is coming down here for Zest as well. I like the play out of parting, but it just didn't really work out. As Zest is just a little bit too good. 57 supply against 51 currently. Parting on a tiny probe lead, but that's not going to be... Uh, a game changer anytime soon as we see the two order calls moving in here i wouldn't even be surprised if he oh after seeing these uh, stalkers tries to go for the pylon yeah yeah 
There we go. Starts attacking the Python. Won't be in time. Actually, now needs to be careful that he won't actually lose his stalkers or his uh, his oracles to a to a potential blink. Oh. Yeah, okay. Parting probably should have hidden that a bit better. With Blink, you can very often catch oracles that are trying to, to pull some sneaky moves on you. Now, another thing that's kind of funny here is that Zest is going pretty hard on the assumption that there's not going to be any more DTs. Like, he didn't... Until now, he just didn't really get any detection at home. Uh, he doesn't even have a recall available. So, these oracles are pretty... I mean, pretty landlocked here. Well... Stalker locked in here. Like, how how would he deal with DTs right now? He just kind of straight up die, honestly, which is a risk. I mean, you always have these clowns that just send in another DT. Not going to be the case this time, though, as we see Nexus coming down here for parting soon. We have no plus one yet. He loves to play without these upgrades. He did it in the game on Romantic side as well. In the second game, really didn't have much of upgrades either, but that was a one base build, so can't blame him too much for that. Zest so moving across the map. What's the stalker counts here? We see 10 versus 13, but parting stalkers are split off. Oh my god, that was a straight up snipe on that Nexus, wasn't it? Was that a cancel? I didn't catch that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of stalkers here for parting, though. Once again, similar setup as in game number one. We have Zest going into that plus one. This time there is a faster robo though, and with an immortal, very often you can kind of hold these types of attacks no battery available at the third base there is a battery and a cannon at the natural though and i think parting wants to go for the natural he oh bad blink forward they're coming out of out of zest ends up losing two stalkers for it good micro here for parting uh, picks up the one stalker that was low and already blinked forward tiny blink back another blink back blink to the side perhaps no there we go Solid moves here coming out of parting. Is it going to be enough though? 19 stalkers against 16. Immortal on the way, plus one on the way. We have the battery being used. Super battery has been used as well. There's a six stalker lead here for parting. But the question is, <clears throat> even if he gets a cancel here on the third base, will he be able to stop a counter attack? And more importantly, and or more urgently, does he have anything in position for these oracles? The answer is going to be yes. Oh, pfft. Whoa, Oracles make it into the main base. That's going to be six, seven workers if Zest is paying attention. Zest is paying attention. Three, four, five, okay, four workers. Slight miscontrol there coming out of Zest. Immortal gets rallied forward for no real reason as well. Now with plus one, of course, Immortal's three shot stalkers, which is a massive deal. We still have a pretty decent stalker lead here, though, for parting. Some of these stalkers are, of course, at home. But this is looking uh, a little bit dicey here. For Zest in the defensive department. Now, I say that, I look one more time at the units that we see 17 against 19, plus one done already for Zest. Third base has finished though here for parting. And these oracles, of course, also occupy a bit in this army supply, which isn't going to really matter in the damage. Now, if these oracles find another good angle and they get a couple of workers now, that'd be big. Oh my god, this was a massive blink forward. We'll be able to take out two, three stalkers immediately with the immortal as well. I think Parting will just need to uh, start running. It is, it's the only solution he has. He needs to freaking leave right now. He needs to get out of here. Uh, loses three more workers in the natural and maybe some in the in the third as well. Didn't quite see where they're going. Observer not uh, not being too hot today. I wonder who that guy is. But probably should be firing him soon. Um, Immortal coming out here for Parting. He is up a base but only by like 20 seconds work account is relatively equal so in reality he's just down an upgrade and Zest's already starting plus two he's starting his charge as well i think parting needs to go again i think parting knows he needs to go again i think parting is going to go again ah oh, the problem i'm having here looking at this game is that we we just have this game is it's even steven you know this game is as close as it's going to get in unit count and the problem here is that there's going to be a defensive advantage for Zest, there's an immortal lead for Zest, and he has an upgrade lead. And on top of that, we have a massive timer in this plus two, in this charge, in these extra gateways here. Uh, basically a timer that, that that Parting should be aware of. Oh my god. Prism gets sniped, no close by reinforcements anymore. Stalker count should start to dwindle very rapidly here. Good blink forward. Almost gets a, a one shot on both of these immortals, but I think too many stalkers have gone down here on the side of parting. And at this point, the stalker count should be in favor of Zest. There it is, the blink forward. 
Sentry's in the back dealing a little bit of extra damage. The Blink Micro out of Spartan is a lot better than that of Zest. But with the plus one upgrade, I don't even think it is going to matter here. As uh, the army of Zest is looking absolutely massive. There is a Prism there. Another Immortal is being built. Parting still wants to keep attacking. But at this point, I mean, he's up 10 workers. Sure, he's going to be down two upgrades. But I feel like perhaps with a Robo Bay, it would be possible to get something done here. I'd love to see him try. But uh, it's going to be extremely rough here for him. It's going to be extremely rough here for him. I do have to admit that. Forge going down. I don't think that is the way. I think if you're this far down in upgrades, the only thing you can truly do is go straight into Disruptors. Because Disruptors don't really care about upgrades whatsoever. However, I don't think Zest is going to be waiting for that. As plus two has finished now. He's up in Immortals. He has double the Stalker count. Sure, he might be down in Workers. But he is up in absolutely everything else. And... Oh yeah, yeah, supplies might look close. Position is good for parting as well with the prism. We'll be able to showcase his fantastic micro because let's be real, so far in this game, the one with the better micro has been parting. Um, the problem is if the other guy just has more stuff and better upgrades. Sometimes the micro just doesn't seem to matter quite as much. Good move forward there. Tries to get an immortal, doesn't quite get it. Blink forward coming out of zest. Very, very risky. On the edge there gets the gets the immortal. The super battery goes down as well and. I'm afraid here for parting. This might just be a little bit too much. There's too many zealots alive for this pro pool to truly do anything. We have another warp in of zealots. The immortal going absolutely ham. Parting's immortal is isolated on the top here. And as the extra zealots start moving, and I'm expecting a GG any second now out of parting. And that will be all she wrote most likely for this series. As parting continues microing his units until every last stalker has died. He taps out, says GG as Zest wins the series. Two to one. Uh, thanks so much to Oli Molik for supplying me with these replays through her Patreon, patreon.com slash Oli Molik, uh, if you want those yourself. And uh, I hope you did enjoy it. Don't forget to smash like, hit the subscribe button. I'll be posting in the next few days a lot more videos as I'll be casting the IAM Katowice and I'll be posting those straight away after 24 hours to my YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that as well. All the highest level of games with the, the 15th best caster in the world, me. And uh, potentially Lambo as well. So looking forward to that. And I uh, hope to see you all soon. Bye bye.